Hello, and may I welcome you to our worship for Ash Wednesday here from St. Martin in the Boring, Birmingham. Ash Wednesday is a very important day for many of us as it marks the beginning of the season of Lent. And I know for many, Lent is understandably a, a solemn and serious season, but it has a joyful purpose. And that purpose is to draw ever closer to God and prepare our hearts, our minds and our lives to be ready to celebrate all that Jesus did for each of us by his death on the cross. And then to rejoice and celebrate in the good news of his resurrection this coming Easter Sunday. So may I encourage all of us to think prayerfully and thoughtfully about how we can observe Lent and make this a purposeful season to draw ever closer to the Lord. There are lots of ways in which we could do that. Maybe by extra time in prayer, prayer with one another, a study of scripture, a time in quietness and in solitude with God, maybe by giving up something, that self-denial and self-discipline, or maybe embracing something. All of these things can be of great benefit as we enter into this wonderful season of Lent and make it a blessing, make it a purposeful season of drawing ever closer to our Lord and Saviour. A little later in our worship, I'm going to be leading us in a time of Holy Communion. And if it's helpful to you, why not pause this recording, get some bread and wine, wafer, fruit juice, and then you can join in in Holy Communion in your own way at home. Before that, Marion's going to be sharing some thoughts from God's Word, so you might like to also find a Bible and open it to Matthew chapter 6. Equally, it's our practice and custom here at St. Martin's to offer to all those who wish uh, to receive a sign of the cross in ash on our forehead as a symbol of our seeking of God's forgiveness, our desire to confess, our, our desire to repent and to change in humility, to come before God looking for his grace and mercy and forgiveness. Now, I can't do that for you uh, this year. But if you'd like to do that for yourself at home, uh, maybe find some way, just get a match, light it, blow it out, and then rub your fingers when it's cooled on the end of the match. And that should just give you enough ash to draw a little cross on your forehead. But if you don't have access to anything like that, just do it symbolically. It's what it represents that really matters. And when we get to that point in our worship, maybe just draw with your finger a sign of Jesus' cross on your forehead as a sign of your desire to seek repentance and forgiveness through his cross. So let me lead us in prayer. And I'd like to begin with some words from David from Psalm 51. And David wrote this, the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. So brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection. It became the custom of the church to prepare for this by a season of penitence and fasting. At first, this season of Lent was observed by those who were preparing for baptism at Easter and by those who were to be restored to the church's fellowship from which they had been separated through sin. In course of time, the church came to recognise that by careful keeping of these days, all Christians might take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel. And so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Therefore, let us pray together for God's grace to keep this Lent faithfully. Heavenly Father, your Son spent 40 days in the wilderness in prayer and preparation for his life of ministry. He was filled with the Spirit, fed on your word, and resisted the temptations of the devil. 
In imitation of our Lord and Saviour, may we use this season of Lent wisely and positively to grow through spiritual disciplines in faith and love, to become more like Jesus and to walk closely with you each and every day. Amen. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of our God. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Together we pray, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed 
and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. As a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of preparation for Easter, I invite you to receive on your head in ash the sign of the cross, the symbol of our salvation. We pray. God, our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from your sin and be faithful to Christ. God, our Father, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's Ash Wednesday. At this time last year, COVID-19 was on the other side of the world, as far as we knew. And we really didn't know much about it. What a difference a year makes. I was reminded of this as, as I was taking my constitutional around Cannon Hill Park the other day. We'd had a, a light powdering of snow and I'd got my trusty staff, my, my thumb stick. And I was walking around and it was such a lovely day. I was smiling and saying good morning to people. And I met this young man on my way out. And we said good morning and what a lovely day and how beautiful it looked. And then we carried on walking and we met on the other side of the park. Again, and he said, to, you know, it really is amazing. And I said, Yes, God is really good. And he said, yes. I got over COVID in March and I realise how wonderful life is. He said, but we hear an awful lot about making sure that we keep physically safe and that our mental health is right. He said, but you and I know that our spirits are important. I said, oh, I do. And we carried on talking. And then he said a very interesting thing. He said, you know, it's our spiritual relationship with God that gives us hope. Muhammad went on his way and I carried on mine. But these few words got me thinking about what Jesus said in the Sermon of the Mount. In spite of our experiences over the past year, you know, in spite of the negativity that's all around us, and in spite of the fact that we're at the beginning of Lent and many, many people think of this as a dreary time of having to give up this and that, chocolate, sweets, alcoholic drink, whatever. Yet, yet this is a period for greater introspection, a time to re-examine our 
own spirit's relationship with God and with Christ and find a different way, a different route on our journey through life. Jesus spoke of three areas of our lives for us to meditate on. Fasting, prayer and money. Particularly the necessity not to show off about how wonderful we think we are, how generous we are. Because God sees right into our hearts. He knows all our shortcomings. He knows what we are like. We need to look at him. So let's ponder for a few moments on the discipline of fasting. I have to admit, I have never really had this on the top of my must do list ever. But following the latest letter that we received from Jeremy, if you're not a member of St. Martin's, uh, Jeremy is the rector and he is the one who is leading the service today. Fasting is something to be considered. He tells us, and these are his words, fasting is a great way to humbly acknowledge our dependence on God. Fasting is a great way to humbly acknowledge our dependence on God. Mm. What's so important in my life that I need to stop it for a while? I'll definitely have to think on that. As I feel that unless I put something in its place, I'll carry on as I have been doing. Yes, I could stop playing Sudoku on my iPad or any other games on my iPad come to that. What am I going to put in its place? Well, I suppose I could spend more time praying. But if fasting is a step too far at the moment, particularly if you fast for, from food for a day or even half a day and your physical requirements make it impossible. Perhaps there's another way. Many years ago, and it, it, it is a long time ago now, one of our Tuesday congregation asked me at the back of church if I remembered a sermon I'd preached three years earlier. Um, it appears I'd preached on we Ash Wednesday uh, and I couldn't remember it. And she said, well, you said that if one couldn't give up or fast in Lent, do something useful instead, like putting five pence pieces in a jar throughout Lent and then at the end of Lent, giving it to a charity. She informed me that she was still doing it three years later. But now she wasn't saving five pence pieces, she was saving 20 pence pieces. And she hadn't realised how it all grew. And she didn't just do it for Lent, she did it every day. She was an amazing lady. Iris's answer to make a new habit that suited her could be hard in Lent at the moment as there's so little money in circulation. But perhaps one needs to be more creative. Uh, the old fashioned habit of writing letters seems a great idea because the recipient could read and reread 
any lovely words you write. Or just a short phone call sometimes can make all the difference to a person's well-being. You never know. <laughs> you may be an angel unawares. We meet frequently on Zoom and would love to welcome any of you who can join us. In the evening Bible studies and the new Lent course are a great way of keeping in touch as well as being a time for deepening our faith. You never know. You you might just say the right word for someone who's there. You might just make a great difference in prayer. But if that's not your thing, just resolving to spend a few moments each day is putting time aside to read a passage from the Bible, to think about it, to pray about it and to pray for yourself that you may know the Lord Jesus better. And I promise you, I can, I can promise you, it'll have a most amazing effect. So as we ponder on this sermon that Jesus spoke, we find that he's telling us we have to give without ostentation, we have to pray quietly, we have to fast secretly. Why? Because none of this is about us. It's about God and Jesus and our relationship with the Father and the Son and helping each other bear the burdens of life in the power of the Holy Spirit. So let us pray together. Lord, this Lent, make us not too busy to pray but slow us down to ponder anew your place in our hearts, that we, we may be as Christ to those who walk with us and to those we meet on our journey of life. May your name be glorified. Amen. Thank you.
Although we can't be together to do this physically, let us now share together in God's peace. Words of Scripture. Now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace. He came and preached peace to those who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we all have access to the Father by the one Holy Spirit. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the word and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. And as we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. the blood of Christ. Our prayer after communion. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the Lord be strong, take heart. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you will want to join us again this coming Sunday as we celebrate worship for the first Sunday of Lent. And we're going to begin looking at the book of the prophet Malachi. Please do join us if you can. I'd like to end our worship now with a prayer of blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.